Hello students, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Anup Kumar Kapoor from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module Microscopic and Gross Anatomy of Human Bones from the paper Forensic Anthropology. Learning objectives are first to determine the identity of the diseased, second to able to define the process and examining the size, shape and structure of a bone. Third, to able to describe the microscopic structure and diagnosis of human bone. Four, to able to describe skeleton system function. Next, able to define bone and classification of shape and type of human's bone. The body is shaped and supported by a framework of bones called the skeleton which protects internal organs such as the brain, the lungs and provide an anarchy of the muscles. Bones are alive and carry on all life functions. The condition of bones can tell investigators about a person's health and nutrition during life. Bones develop from cells known as osteoblasts, first beginning as soft cartilage before the bone hardens through the introduction of various minerals, a process known as ossification. A skeleton system function, spores and protection and assistant in movement. Bone is one of the hardest structures of the animal body. It possesses also a certain degree of toughness and elasticity. Its color in a fresh state is pinkish white externally and deep red within. The human body bones that perform five main functions. The first is sport, second is production, third is body movement, fourth is blood cell formation, and the lastly storage of organic salts and lipids. Skeleton system function, mineral homostasis, blood cell reproduction, and triglyceride storage. First, support for soft tissue and provision for attachment for many skeletal muscles. Then, protection for the brain and spinal cord and thoracic organs. Then, movement, bones used as lever for skeletal muscles joint allow movement. Then storage and release of minerals, especially calcium and phosphorus. Then storage of fat as an energy reserve in yellow marrow. Then lastly, blood cell formation. Most hematopoiesis, that is blood cell formation, occurs in the marrow cavities of certain bones. Bone. Bones are made up of hard, living, self-repairing tissue that is supplied with blood vessels and nerves. Bone consists of widely spaced osteocytes, that is bone cells, and the matrix that lies between them. The matrix is made up of fibers of collagen, which gives bone its flexibility and mineral salts, mainly calcium phosphate, which gives bone its strength. Surrounding all bone is a layer of hard, compact bone. The spaces within spongy bones are frequently filled with red marrow. It is important for bones to be strong to support our body weight and in some cases provide production such as the skull and ribs. However, they must also be light enough to make movement possible. Classification of bone shape. Bones can be divided into a number of classes. First is short. Second is long, third is flat, fourth is smooth, and lastly it is irregular bones. Short bones such as the carpal bones within the wrist tend to be as wide as they are long. Long bones are, as the name suggests, longer in length and also tend to be slightly curved, for example, femur. Flat bones such as the ribs and Breastbone could be described as being fairly flat and plate-like. Sismoid bones refer to small bones embedded in a tendon, often found in joints such as the knees and wrist. Finally, irregular bones 
refer to a certain class of bone that do not belong in the other categories such as the bones composing the spine. Types of bone, first is lamellar or compact bone. Under this contains osteons composed of concentrated lamellae. Second, each osteon has an osteonic canal that is Havagian canal which has blood vessels and nerves. Third is osteocytes found within lacunies. Fourth is canalculi connect osteocytes and function to diffuse dilution to the osteocytes. Next is communicating, also called performating or workman's canals, connect adjacent osteons and carry blood vessels. In the lastly, diaphyses or shafts or long bones are composed mostly of lamellar bone. Second is of the time of bone is cancerous, tabular or spongy bone. Does not contain Harvardian canal system that is osteons. And the last is the nerves with blood vessels run randomly through the loose meshwork of bone. Bone shape and gross appearance. Bones vary in their shape and gross appearance. Their shape and structure is affected by genetic, metabolic and mechanical factors. Each bone is the result of a long functional history through innumerable successive generations. The fact that the primary shape of the bone is genetically determined is well demonstrated by transplantation of embryonic skeleton tissues and organ culture studies. The other characteristics of the bone seem to be self-determined. Mechanical influences may not be operative at the time of establishment of the primary form of the bone. Later on, muscles become active and may influence bone growth even in the prenatal life. There is a lot of increased activity which augments growth both in length and circumference till the epiphyses are fused. Bone anatomy, metabolic influences affect bone growth at all stages of development. It is known that osteogenesis necessarily requires the availability of calcium, phosphorus and vitamin A, C, D, along with the secretions of hypophysis, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal glands and gonads. All these processes are therefore essential for skeletal form and dimensions. If we were to cut a cross section through a bone, we would first come across a thin layer of dense connective tissue known as peristonium. This can be divided into two layers, an outer fibrous layer containing mainly fibroblasts and an inner cabium layer containing progenitor cells which develop into osteoblasts, the cells responsible for bone formation. The peristium provides a good blood supply to the bone and point for muscular attachment. Under this peristodium is a thin layer of compact bone also called cortical bone, which provides the bone strength. It consists of tightly stacked layers of bone which appear to form a solid secretion, although do contain osteons which, like canals, provide passageways through the hard bone matrix. Bone marrow. Bone marrow is a jelly-like material found inside bones. A red bone marrow inside the hip skull, collar bones, sternum, and bulk bone is the site of blood cell production. Red marrow is the site of red and white cell production. Then comes spongy bone. Spongy bone is a honeycomb layer that lies beneath compact bone. It forms a light but strong framework that reduces the bone's weight but not its strength. The other consists of slender fibers and lamellae, which joins to form a reticular structure. This, from this resemblance to lattice work, is called spongious tissue. The compact tissue is always placed on the exterior of the bone, 
the cancellous in the interior. The relative quantity of these two kinds of tissue varies in different bones and in different parts of the same bone according to as strength or lightness is requisite. Close examination of the compact tissues shows it to be extremely porous so that the difference in structure between it and the cancellous tissue depends upon the different amount of solid matter and the size and number of species in each. The cavities are small in compact tissue and the solid matter between them abundant. While in the cancellous tissue, the spaces are large and the solid matter is in smaller quantity, students link to form a framework. Compact bone. Compact bone forms the outer part of bone. After teeth animal, compact bone is the hardest material in the body. It is made up of parallel cylinders called osteons. Each osteon consists of layer or lamellae. Bone looks dense and solid but full of passageways that serve as a conduits for nerves, blood vessels, and lymphatic vessels. Blood and nerve supply a bone. Blood is supplied to mature compact bone through Haverian canal formed when individual lamellae form concentric rings around larger longitudinal canals within the bone tissue. These Haverian canals typically run parallel to the surface and along the long axis of the bone. The canals and the surrounding lamellae are called Haverian system or an osteon. An Haverian canal generally contains one or two capillaries and nerve fibers. The Haverian canal also surround nerve cells throughout the bone and communicate with osteocytes and lacunas, that is spaces within the dense bone matrix that contain the living bone cells through canaculi. This unique arrangement is conducive to mineral salt deposits and storage which gives bone tissue its strength. Bone formation. Major cell types in bone tissues are osteogenic, osteoblasts, osteocytes and osteoclats. The structure and the development of bone. The bones and teeth of craniofacial complex key identification tools for the forensic odontologists effectively distinguish one person from others and one population from another and are used to determine the race, age and sex of a person. The adult human skeleton consists of some 206, that is 206 individual bones with there being even more in the skeleton of a child whose bones have not undergone certain fusion processes yet and many of these bones may prove useful to anthropologists. Levels of bone structure. First is gross, then macroscopic and chemical. Bone doning life is permitted by vessels and is enclosed except where it is coated with articular cartilage in a fibrous membrane, the peristoium by means of which many of these vessels reach the heart tissues. If the peristoium be stripped from the surface of the living bone, small bleeding points are seen which mark the entrance of peristeal vessels and on the section during life of every part of the bone excludes blood from the minute vessels which ramify in it. Now we see at this uh, diagram that is on bone growth. First see that is hyaline cartilage model that is one piece of a bone when it start. It shows two primary ossification centers that start from the center and then we have peristrium at the corner. Then in the third stage, blood vessel starts coming in and scanty ossification center starts at the lower end. Then in the next stage, we see medullary cavities forming, right? And the last stage, in the last bone, we have epiphyseal plate is coming up. 
then peristodium and the central part is compact bone. Then also it shows at the upper end of the bone shows articular cartilage and spongy bone. So this way how the bone start from hyaline cartilage model starting from the simple it goes to the last stage of the first stage where is the formation of the bones bone is completed. Histology of bone tissue first is lamella. Lamella is one of the tubes of bone surrounding a herbarian canal. Second is lacuna. Lacuna is a space that contains histocytes that is bone cell. Third is heaven canal is a space that runs down the centers of osteon carrying blood vessels and nerves. Then blood vessels. Blood vessels supplies bone cells with oxygen and food. Osteon and osteon is a small piece of compact bone made up of tiny tubes called lamellae arranged in a circular layers around a central Havarian canal. Transfer section of dense bone, peristoium. The peristoium adheres to the surface of each of the bones in nearly every part, but not to cartilaginous extremities. When strong tendons or ligaments are attached to a bone, the peristoium is incorporated with them. It consists of two layers closely united together. The outer one formed chiefly of connective tissue containing occasionally a few fat cells. The inner one of elastic fibers of the finer kind forming dense membranous network which again can be separated into several layers. In young bones, the peristodium is thick and very vascular and is intimately connected at either end of the bone with the epiphyseal cartilage but less closely with the body of the bone from which it is separated by layer of soft tissue containing a number of granule corpuscles or osteoblasts by which ossification proceeds on the exterior of the young bone. Later in life, the peristudium is thinner and less vascular and the osteoblasts are converted into an epitholoid layer on the deep surface of the peristudium. The peristudium serve as a needle for the ramification of the vessels previous to their distribution in the bone, hence the liability of bone to exophilation or necrosis when denuded of this membrane by injury or disease. Fine nerves and lymphatics which generally accompany the arteries may also be demonstrated in the peristodium. A transfer section of the dense bone may be cut with a saw and ground down until it is sufficiently thin. If this be examined with a rather low power, the bone will be seen to be mapped out into the number of circular districts, each consisting of a central hole surrounded by a number of concentric rings. These districts are termed Havarian system. The central hole is Havarian canal and the rings are layers of bony tissue arranged concentrically around the central canal and termed lamellae. Moreover, on closer examination, it will be found that between this namely and therefore also arranged concentrically around the central canal are a number of little dark spots, the lacunae, and these lacunae are connected with each other with the central Haveri canal by number of fine dark lines which radiate like the spokes of a wheel and are called canal Cooley. The lacunas are situated within the lamellae and consist of a number of oblong spaces. In an ordinary microscope section viewed by transmitted light, they appear as fusiform opaque spots. Each lacuna is occupied during life by a branch cell termed a bone cell or bone corpus corpuscle, the processes from which extend into canal cooley.
Now, Canal Kuli. The Canal Kuli are exceedingly minute channels crossing the Lamely and connecting the Lakuni with neighboring Lakuni and also the Havidian Canal. From the Havidian Canal, a number of Canal Kuli are given off, which radiate from it and open into the first set of Lakuni between the first and second Lamely. From these Lakuni, a second set of Canal Kuli is given off. These run outward to the next series of lacunae and so on until the periphery of Haverian system is reached. Here, the canicule given off from the last series of lacuna do not communicate with the lacunae of neighboring Haverian system. But after passing outward for a short distance form loose and return to their own lacunae. Thus, every part of a Havadian system is supplied with nutrient fluids derived from the vessels in the Havadian canal and distributed through the canaculi and lacunae. The bone cells are contained in the lacunae, which, however, they do not completely fill. They are flattened, nucleated branch cells, homologous with those of connective tissue. The branches, especially the young bones, pass into the canal coli from the lacunae. When we see the diagram, the, the structure and the physical properties of the bone, first we have endosteum, the nerve is coming up, blood vessels, compact bones. This is how things they are embedded in the bones. And that shows the structure of the compact bone and spongy bone, how they are different in the structure and different parts of the bone or the, what we show is the physical that is the osteon and osteonic canal that is the center one and then we can see the nerves on osteogenic canal and also slightly bigger than the osteo is the blood vessel so that shows the structure and the physical properties of the bones and how they are formed and the role of all these blood vessels compact bone nerve they had different functions Cartilage. When we were born, our bones were not as strong and hard as they are now. This is because when we were babies, our bones were mostly made of cartilage. A cartilage is the soft, flexible substance that we can feel when we press our ears and nose. As we grow, the cartilage slowly transforms into dense and hard bones. Our bones stop growing after we reach the age of 25 years. However, a point to be noted is that not all cartilage transform into bones. Apart from your ears and nose, cartilage can be found in places including the joints of the bones, rib cage, bronchial tubes, and intervertebral discs. This enables smooth movements between the bones since the cartilage protects them from rubbing against each other. Bone fractures, a fracture or break, happens when a bone is exposed to a sudden force that it cannot withstand. There are two types of fracture. In simple or close fracture, the broken bone ends remain below the skin, whereas in compound or open fractures, they stick out through the skin and often cause damage to surrounding tissue. Fractures bone mend themselves. Then types of fractures. The first is fractures may be classified by position, completeness of the break, orientation of the break, relative to the long axis of the bone, and whether the bone ends penetrate the skin or not. Then communicated, then compression, spiral, epiphyseal, depressed, and gynistic. The slide shows that the compact bone and cancellous bone, how they are compressed together, that reflects the different parts, that is osteoblast, osteoclast, osteocytes, caniculus and lamellae. All this we have discussed earlier and this shows the formation in the trabecula. And then again we say spaces contain bone marrow and blood vessels. How in the compact bone they are jumbled together and forming the bone marrow and blood vessels. Remolding of bone. Bone remolding occurs starting during bony callus formation and continuing for several months after the bony callus is remodeled. The excess material on the diaphysis exterior and within the medullary cavity is removed and compact bone is lowered down 
to reconstruct the shaft walls. The final structure of the remodeled area resembles that of the original unbroken bony regions because it responds to the same set of mechanical stresses. Factors affecting bone growth and remodeling minerals. First, a blood clot forms where bone is broken. Second, new blood vessels forms between broken ends. Third, spongy bones form between broken ends. And lastly, fracture has healed and bones return to its original shape. The osteoclastic identify that bone has reached the end of its life cycle and break down its tissue. The osteoblasts then make sure that new bone tissue take place of the old ones, making sure that their bones are always as good as new. Imagine imaging bones. Doctors use X-ray to look inside the patient's body for the sign of damage or disease without surgery. X-rays are type of radiation that passes through the body's soft tissue but not through bone. An X-ray machine produces a negative call, a radiograph in which only the bone shows up body. This diagram, the bone remodel, the continual replacement of old bone tissue. Now here it shows in four categories. The first is the hematoma where it shows how the breakage of the bone takes place and the replacement of old bones, how it slowly takes place, the bony callus or spongy bones and then healed fracture, the different processes which have been given in the diagram. Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis refers to a group of diseases in which bone reabsorption outspaces bone deposit, bone becomes so fragile bone mass is reduced, spongy bone is most vulnerable, osteoporosis occurs most often in middle aged and most menopausal women. Factors that contribute to osteoporosis, petite body, insufficient exercise, immobility, a poor diet in the calcium and protein, smoking, abnormal vitamin D, hormonal conditions. Reducing the risk of osteoporosis, rich source of calcium, a vital ingredient for strong bones and reducing the size of osteoporosis later in line. Together with another mineral called phosphate, it provides main strength in bones but also helps to increase the power of muscles. Getting enough calcium in the diet during childhood is crucial for strong bones. Osteomalacia and rickets are both caused by insufficient calcium in the diet or by vitamin D deficiency. Now from the diagram, from the symptoms of osteoporosis, in one we have the normal bone and then the other is the bone with the osteoporosis. Now here you can see the difference between the two, the size of the normal bone and in the osteoporosis the size has become larger. That means fracture have started or the smart spaces have started coming in that we give different spaces between the different parts of the bone. Now we summarize this module. Bones are dynamic structure that are undergoing constant changes and remodeling in response to the ever-changing environment. In fact, there are so many turnovers that in four years the skeleton of a young person will be completely new as compared with the skeleton today. Bones are, can react and respond to environmental stimuli. They can get bigger or smaller. They can strengthen themselves when needed and when broken. They are among the few organs with the ability to regenerate without scar. Bones of the skeleton system surround and protect organs such as the brain and the heart. Human bones are very strong and can resist tremendous bending and compression forces without breaking. This is allows the major features of individual bones to be seen clearly without being obstructed by associated 
soft tissues such as muscles, tendons, ligaments, cartilage, nerves and blood vessels. The important relationships among bones and soft tissues should not be ignored. Automatic reduction and treatment is given at most priority in medical field. To develop an efficient automatic bone fracture detection and identification system, a clear understanding about the human skeleton system and fracture is required. Thank you.